A slow moving car. The way I see it, being a hero just puts a target on your back. Yeah, been there, done that. Welcome everybody to another Nair Thoughts review. Nair Thoughts here reviewing, but a television show. This time it's a Netflix original show and it is Jessica Jones. But before I go on with the review, if you are listening to this on SoundCloud, you could jump ahead and watch this exact same audio into a video on YouTube, Nair Thoughts. And if you are listening to this on, if you're watching this on YouTube, you could go ahead and jump back to uh, SoundCloud and listen to it on SoundCloud, Nair Thoughts review, audio review, video review, and Jessica Jones, Netflix original show. Starring Christian Whittier, uh, Luke, uh, no, no, Luke Cage, pick Mike, Mike Coulter, I believe, uh, David Tennant as uh, Kilgrave, and a bunch of other great actors, believe it or not. And um, pretty much the story, I mean, while well, well, giving so much of the story, but pretty much it takes the uh, Marvel comic books of Jessica Jones into this uh, realm. And she, is a, she is a PI, private investigator. She's a, just solving normal PI cases, you know, divorces, you know, um, stalking on couples and divor- on uh, cheating and whatnot. Handing out some penis, some penises and uh, stuff like that. Until one day she uh, she she sees that uh, our former uh, ex enemy, our ex foe, who seems that must have been who would have been dead, but comes back and comes back to haunt her. And she has to solve the case in which she must kill him or she must either frame him back for murder, frame him for murder for stuff that he committed. Um. Only thing different about that is that the problem is that he is a he is a villain and he has uh, powers that it's hard to really tell people that he can, might control you when really it's the media, but it's but it's still based in the world around heroes. That's pretty much is the basic plot of uh, Jessica Jones. But Jessica Jones really is honestly right off the bat is really intriguing because you you you, you automatically just dropped off into her into her life. You never you never see so much of an orange or you still get an orange story here, but you get mostly just filler stories to tell you that will relate a lot into what's happening right now in her story. But I love that it just drops you in. She's already a PI. It drops you in. There are a bunch of Easter eggs to the comic books and to the to the to the Marvel, the MCU, the uh, universe. Uh, but it's one of those where it really, um, it really focuses on her story. I mean, it really doesn't spend a whole lot of time in referencing in in referencing like Daredevil, which takes in the same realm. Um, and there's one thing about this really show, the whole season that I like that it's really is intriguing, it's entertaining. It is a really, it's a thriller. It is a mystery. It's a crime mystery, and it really feels like, like, like when she's doing her undercover work. If that's the most interesting part, because you see how she, how she does her undercover work and how she uses her powers to even does that, even to defend herself from guys who are mad because she uh, found because he shows them pictures that her wife or their husband and cheating on them and whatnot. It really is an intriguing story. But as for Kristen Ritter, who hers as Jessica Jones is really phenomenal. It's really entertaining. She she that is her is her character. It's her show. Uh you have other people uh uh, uh Tisha, uh I forget her fucking name. Uh pr- pretty much uh this uh Jones best friend. She also plays well in the character. She really is you could say you could tell there's a bond there. Another great is the lawyer, I forget the fucking girl's name, but uh Trinity from the Matrix. She is going to be great. Uh, she is kind of one of those edges where you know if you took charge or if you can't or is in between. Uh, David Tennant as uh, Kilgrave, the Purple Man, is really is. At first, this felt like someone channeling Loki in the whole universe. It felt like it's just like a eh, typical MCU, you know, enemies. It's whatever. It's predictable, you know. But it really works because you really. Or charmed by him because the way he's funny and the way he's an asshole. He's kind of a cocky asshole because he still has way to where he's mind controlling to put in jokes in there and makes it funny. We made him great in like something like Doctor Who. Uh and pretty pretty much it it's is his villain character and that makes it uh, stand out with uh with Jones rebelness and stuff like that. One character that I really have particular which is weird because I don't know, like I feel maybe until his show gets on is Luke Cage. Because I feel like the actor Coulter is just walking through and he's just trying to play a menacing type of guy. And it's just never really... I There is some emotion he does well. But I feel like anybody big and muscular could have played that. But I'm really intrigued to see what they do with his show. How much is it before is it after? Because you really, right off the bat, he tells you his own story in the conversation. But that's it. And that's really interesting. Uh, that's interesting. The one thing I really have to say right off the bat is I like this better than Dead Because Dead felt so, 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 
I don't know. It just felt so boring at times, and it felt so metal dramatic with the with the origin. But I still entertained by it. I was still entertained by it. Uh, Jessica Jones is more interesting. The whole story. It, it, I mean, from I don't know shit about Jessica Jones, and really right off the bat, it showed me like, wow, I, I'm intrigued. The first episode, two episodes in, I'm intrigued. It does slow down by the last episode. I wasn't. I didn't think this last episode was as strong as the Daredevil first episode, last episode. But it still is. It still holds well as a good season. One of my biggest complaints that I have to say about these shows is that I maybe this is me just nitpicking, but I always feel like there's always you could tell when they're very grounded and low budget. You know, like for example, I love the idea of the hallway scene for Daredevil, but however, I always say like that's a stunt double, and uh, it's all right. It's kind of sloppy. Everything's always sloppy in, in, in the choreograph. The actions always feel sloppy. It doesn't feel as as great directed, you know? And here, the, there are some things. You can tell when she has a power, when she's supposedly going to throw a guy or even a girl, you can tell that the actors just push themselves, the stunt doubles just push themselves and they fall. Or when... There's a funny scene that I just die laughing because I just seem so fucking fake, uh, but it works well. This is me, like, this is nitpicking because I notice I feel like nobody notices it but me. Um, she's supposed to carry uh, Cage, Luke Cage, uh, from, from a bed. She's pretty much carries him from the bed. And she's supposed to show you how strong she is. And it's weird because you just see Luke Cage's body is holding still and you see his shirts lift up like you could tell there's a there's pretty much like a wire holding them up and it's just like eh, it's nitpicking but I noticed those things but it, it it throws me off guard every now and then from the show but not that much of the story but that's what makes me more interested in the story but like I said I found this more interesting than Daredevil I found this more entertaining than Daredevil in many ways but I want to see more where they combine the world because they by the end they kind of combine them without giving away too much. But it, I would say if you like Daredevil, you might like this one. But if you're a fan of the action, because this one really grounded on action, this is more plays on on it plays almost like a like a serious uh, court drama, not court drama. That's for Daredevil, but like a serious thriller, just a uh, mystery. It almost it almost pays off like a like a Sherlock episode in a way. Uh, and and it's entertaining and I like that. Um as a verdict for for Jessica Jones, I say it's really entertaining. You guys should go ahead and watch it. If you're a fan of Daredevil, I don't know if you if there there are many people on there that might be like, oh Jessica Jones, I don't want to watch that shit. But it's entertaining. It's it's for anybody. It's for girls, it's for guys. And even Daredevil's for girls and guys. But this is really right off the bar, right off the bat it's entertaining. It's a fucking enjoyable show. It wasn't that strong ending as Daredevil, but it was a more stronger beginning to end than Daredevil for me. At least Daredevil, I think, picked up by the end, but by the middle, it was kind of slow. This is has a lot of great moments in the show. The one thing I found that I didn't have a lot of fillers, and I'm happy, I'm so fucking happy that it wasn't an origin story. That was the main thing I was focused on, that not be a fucking origin story. And you got some origin moments, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't hammer into it so much. And I'm excited to see what they do with Luke Cage, because he was probably the weakest character for me in this fucking show. And I, I, that's all I really have to say about Jessica Jones, and I hope you guys like my review. Hope you guys check out the show. It's on Netflix. Fucking go watch it. I binge watch it all fucking last night and yesterday, and just to do a fucking review. Hope you guys like my reviews. Hope you guys follow the Subscribe, do all that shit. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye, everybody.